Welcome back to Short Scale Modeling. This is part 10 of the AMT Star Trek Next Generation USS Enterprise NCC-1701C. In part 9, I uh, placed the lights in the nacelles and uh, assembled the, the nacelles. In part 10, I'll be putting the saucer section onto the main hull and um, putting in the decals. So let's jump into this. Well, to begin with, I'm using Philagio plastic putty uh, just to uh, fill in tiny little gla gaps that it's going to create some light point. So it's only a, t a very minuscule amount I'm using, um, but be careful that you don't slip and get you any onto the buzzer. That I just did, that's what I'm cleaning now. But luckily I noticed it straight away so I can wipe right off. So as you can see, there's just a tiny little bit going on. I'm using Rebel Aquacolor 05 White, and this is just to go over the areas which I fill, just moving my camera there. Again, just try to put as little as possible on your brush, um, and make sure you've got a thin brush uh, while you're doing this. You really don't want to go over the work that you've done, and particularly you don't want to be touching the, the clear plastic parts. And the same with the white, it's a Rebel Aquacolor 16 Sandy Yellow. And these are going over the um, buzzer collectors at the side here. Now, there's a couple of processes to this. So, first of all, I'm putting in the base color. And then it's Tommy's X27 Clear Red over the top of that lot uh, to give uh, the same color tones as I had before. So, now it's time to attach the saucer section. But first of all, I've got to attach the wires. So I'm just placing on um, a sheaf, uh, the each right sheaf um, on each wire to begin with. Then um, I'll twist the wires from um, that are going into the hull. So that's um, positive to positive and negative to negative or neural to neural. And I do that just by placing the two wires together and twist them around. You can use pliers to do this as well if you wish, uh, to get a better contact. As you can see here, I, I want it really tight, so I'm just using the, the pliers for a better hold and twisting them around as tight as I can go. And then I'm just laying down a, a line of solder uh, across the twisted wire to seal them in place. And once that's done, they won't be able to move. Uh, they shouldn't fight apart. But you only need a thin line. Don't overdo it too much. And of course a quick light test to make sure everything's working. The next step you have to be very careful doing. I'm taking my uh, solder iron and placing it over the shrink uh, tube to um, shrink down onto the wire. Now you don't want to be touching the plastic here. If you are worried about it, put some tape down, um, insulating tape around the rim. Or, or you can lay um, a solder mat underneath the wire. Um, if you're unsure but just um, as long as you don't touch the plastic you'll be okay and once that's done i've tucked the wires in a little bit and it's time to join now i'm just using the normal cement here and um, as you can see it's quite tricky and um, if it does slip like it just did there just make sure your wires are tucked in and then place it in it's very difficult to clamp this up because of this shape so you may need to hold it although at the back there uh, there is a room for one uh, small crocodile clamp where I just put my thumb. So I'll just place a, a, a clamp on there and then I'll hold down uh, the front part with the um, deflector dish goes. Uh, and I only had to hold it for about 10 minutes until it was secure enough to be held down by its own weight. So once that's done, it's uh, another light test to see where the light leaks are going to be. As you can see there immediately, there's some on the neck that's going to have to be taken care of. It's quite big actually, it was uh, more than I was expecting. I suspected that I didn't hold it down um, tight enough uh, uh, to adhere to it. So um, I'm just going to reclamp this and um, have another, another go at it. So that's what I did, but I still had the gap. So that's also going to have to be filled in. I'm using my homemade filler for this uh, gap um, because it's quite a large gap and um, 
the, the plastic will behave better on this filler than the Bellagio putty and will not shrink for one and I can sand it down if necessary uh, quite easily. If you put it on and use a damp cloth like I'm doing here you can get a lot of it smoothed off straight away because it is difficult to sand um, that area. Now it's time to move on to the basin stand. Um, I'm using this uh, bendable uh, rod here, that was a pipe really, or I've got this uh, steel rod. Um, the steel rod's perfect because it won't bend, uh, but that's all the piece I've got and I'm, I'm going to keep that for another build I've got in mind. So um, I'll be using the plastic one. So first of all I have to um, cement the two halves of the upright together. Now this was quite tricky to get lined up. Because it's on an angle and uh, the back piece st uh, stays open and it's curved as well, it took quite a lot of time to get it lined up. Um, you, you'll have to persevere with it. It may have been just me, I, I'm not sure, but it took far longer than I would have thought just to put these two pieces together. And once they got together and dried, I just uh, snipped off the uh, pen here uh, because I'll be putting in the um, plastic rod and then I just filed it down flush uh, to the actual main unit. And then using my pin uh, drill, uh, I, I made a pile of hole in, in the top. I then used the hobby knife to open up that hole to the diameter of the, the rod that's gone into it. And then check for fit to make sure it was all right. Now the reason why I had to do this now is because I, you want to know where it's going to sit on the actual base for your next hole. So um, dry assemble the actual stand first of all and then paint the tip of your rod and place it down through the hole onto the base and decide where it's going to enter. So what you're doing effectively is uh, you're marking the hole at a point just like that. And again with the pin drive and taking the center of that pin mark and drilling the pilot hole. And once more I'm using my hobby knife to open up the hole and um, I'm doing it to the circumference of, of the pin. Um, obviously test fit as you go along, but I, if you've done the mark properly uh, and don't go over the paint mark, um, you should find that the, that the diameter of the pipe will match the hole. So a uh, test fit to make sure you're there. If not, just take it back out and uh, do a little, couple of passes more with your knife uh, until you're, you're happy with it. You want it tight, you don't want this to be slack. So it's better to have it too small as you go uh, than just do it one go and have it too large. So dry fit your stand again and place your rod inside your hole until it reaches uh, the surface. And then you want to measure um, how much this um, rod is going to go inside your model. Then just uh, snip off the ends and then that's your rod ready to be painted. Now it's back to the um, Enterprise C and I'm just going to be touching up the paint where the filler has gone. So I'm starting off with white then I'll go on to the various blues until I get it all painted up. Last to go in is the deflector dish. So I'm just using a bit of canopy glue here and put it all around the inner part of the hole. And then just pushing in the um, deflector shield. It should just pop right in. And then a quick test again to make sure there's no light plates coming from the deflector dish. Now it's time for the decals. I'll fast forward this up because uh, there's uh, so many decals. Now in the end I did have a problem with my uh, printer and decal paper. So I couldn't print the decals off. So I had to use what was in the kit. Unfortunately they were a bit yellow. So I'm, I'm going to have to live with that until I can get my printer sorted. So I'm just placing on the decals. Um, you may know what they are a little bit yellow. It's nothing I, I can get around to, but I will be able to take them off um, in the future and uh, place fresh ones on. I'm using Mr. Hobby H9 Mark Gold for the um, display base, and this is all going to be for the um, outer reaches part here, as you can see. I'm just putting on the first coat. Then it was on to Rebel Aquacolor 90 Silver. Uh, for the middle part. Before I carry on I forgot to put uh, a little hole in the side 
of the display case for the wire. So I'm just using my pin drive there and at the bottom where the two prongs come out, I'm just uh, making a pilot hole, then I'll open the hop uh, like it with my hobby knife for the size of the wire. I'm now using Rebel Aquacolor also in black gloss. This is going to be for the rod, the upright and uh, the uh, other middle parts of the display stand as well as the outer rim. And then it's Rebel Aquacolor 36 camo red for the lettering. Uh, to do this you will need a various size brushes uh, while you're painting this uh, from a very thin to a large flat. Now uh, once you've done it just check for fit again make sure everything is looking all right. Now the base itself is going to be a little bit flimsy uh, with that weight of the enterprise depending on how you're going to show the base. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm adding a bit of modeling clay to the inside of the base. Um, I'm just putting it in and flattening it out, squidging it in uh, to the edges. I then dug a trench from the um, exit point where the wire is going to come into the hole I made uh, for the side of the display for the wire to come out. And the wire all just sat in there nicely. And then I took the kit box and just uh, traced around the edge of the base and then cut it out. Now it's time to assemble the base permanently. Um, it, this upright can be a little bit tight so you may need to either modify it slightly or uh, put a lot of pressure on it to get it to sit in its housing and now i'm putting a little bit of tape around the uh, one end of the rod because it's slightly smaller um, for the opening going into the shape so just a little bit of tape uh, thickens it out slightly so it will sit into its housing so then i just place the wires down the rod then push in the rod into the uh, house at the bottom there. And I'm using super glue here just to attach the actual rod itself. Um, I, I use quite a bit because I want it to make a really good strong bond uh, so this won't move. I then added a little bit of filler from the rod onto the actual ship just again to increase that bond. And just a, a little bit of soldering work left to do um, and extending the um, cable for the, um, the ship so I'm just uh, turning uh, a couple of lengths of wire first of all but before I can join them I've got to attach the um, stand to the ship so I'm just uh, taking the rod now and placing it through the upright on the stand then guiding in the wires through the hole to pull them through and setting the ship on top of the upright. Now you are going to hold this for quite a bit uh, for the glue to set, uh, set. You, you want to make sure it's completely dry before you um, move your hand. I didn't and I got a bit of movement. So I had to refill certain parts. So back to the wire. I've joined them by twisting them, the two wires together. As you can see there. Now I'm just using a bit of solder to make the permanent bond. And then uh, placing a, a shrink sheath onto the bare wire and shrinking it down. And then I've added a little bit of super glue into the trench. And then just pulling the wire down onto the uh, into the the trench so it sits flush um you may wish to add a little bit of tape what i'm doing here just to uh, keep it uh, in place while it dries and once it's all in position i'll just lay the cardboard cut out that i did on the bottom to complete the base the last job to do is put an outer sheath on the wire so i'm just using um these shrink shift sheaths and uh, place them on now i haven't got one continuous one so i'm having to join them in so I'm placing one on, shrinking it down, then overlapping one slightly onto the next and shrinking that down and so off and so on until I get to the bottom. So and there's the second one going on now. Just overlaps slightly and it shrinks right down and conforms into the last one. Well that brings this part to an end, indeed um, the actual uh, build itself. The final reveal video will be up shortly. I've just got to edit that. If you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the uh, entire build? It's, it's under the Enterprise C playlist. Uh, you can see it from start to finish now. Subscribe to the channel for any upcoming updates. Um, hit that like button and of course um, leave a comment. So thank you all very much for watching. Bye for now.